Hi, my name is Albert Dunford and in this tutorial video we are going to talk about using free run mode uh, to look at this uh, uh, full bridge rectifier circuit that we have here with just a, a passive uh, R load and we, so we'll, we're going from AC full bridge rectification, we'll have uh, some capacitive smoothing here and then we're just driving a load here. So let's quickly run the simulation, have a look at the results here. So we're looking at the voltage of the load in one screen we can see that uh, we're not really smoothing it too much yet uh, we can look at the load current which of course should be uh, proportional and we're looking now at the source voltage and we're also looking at the source current so we can see there's a bit of a step in the source current as uh, as we're still as we're as we're charging up this cap here uh, so Let's have a quick look at how we can use the uh, runtime variables and the free run mode of PSIM in order to tune uh, and to use size as capacitors so that we get a nicely smooth uh, DC load, uh, DC voltage. Okay, so uh, coming back to this screen now, open up the clock and we see there's this option here for free run mode. So I'm going to click the checkbox and we can see what's happened here is this total time has been grayed out so previously we had 50 milliseconds worth of simulation we can see down here we had 50 milliseconds worth of data with free run mode there is no end to the simulation so it's just going to keep on simulating and then we're going to use this oscilloscope here to uh, monitor what's going on so let's um, open up the oscilloscope and let's start simulating so we can see down at the bottom here we're simulating these dot 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 there's no end there won't be a completion point here. We'll just have to stop the simulation when we're done. And we can see that these uh, signals, I mapped in the uh, source current uh, on A. On B, we have the uh, load current. And C is giving us uh, the voltage. So channel A is in red. Channel B is uh, in blue. And channel C is uh, in dark green here. And I've scaled it so that and offset it so that B and C have, uh, so the load, voltage, and current are uh, zeroed at the bottom here, and the zero for the input uh, is right at the right in the middle here, and we're triggering on channel A. Yeah, let's have a look now at uh, what happens with the runtime variable. So let's play with the runtime variable for the resistor first. So I can play with this variable, so as we add resistance, so I make the load bigger. We can see how the current uh, changes. So everything's decreasing as I make the load smaller. We can see how the current increases. And I'm really discharging that capacitor quite quickly. So there's no energy storage uh, really occurring at this point. So we can see how the, the effect of the capacitor is being mitigated. So let's go back up to uh, where we started to at, at uh, about 10 ohms. And the next thing I'm going to do is we'll open up this capacitor here. So with each click, I'm going to add a mic 100 microfarads. So each click, we're giving 100 microfarads of capacitance. And we can see how the source current is becoming more and more discontinuous. And we can see how the, the load voltage and current are becoming more and more DC. Like there's 900 microfarads. If we go up to 1 millifarad, 1.0 milli apply, and we'll go up now to more, more and more and more. And so we see the green line is the uh, load voltage. It gets smoother and smoother. The load current also becomes smoother and smoother, obviously. And the uh, source current becomes more and more discontinuous as we uh, tr try and approach DC. And so we can now analyze these things. So say this is this load voltage was now within spec. Uh, we could exit this, uh, stop the simulation, come back to PSIM, turn it off uh, free run mode here, and then uh, rerun the simulation. Look at some graphs here, redraw everything. So we get, we see now our vol source voltage is still nice and swing slight sinusoidal. And we can see our source current is really quite discontinuous. And our load voltage here is uh, charges up, and then it's uh, relatively smooth. If we want to, we can start analyzing these things. So let's we'll zoom in on a couple cycles here. So we'll we'll take these uh, cycles here, 
And let's now overlay onto this one graph the current, the source current, and, this, and what we can do is we can actually do, as we'll delete these screen, screen, delete screen, screen, delete screen, screen, delete screen, and let's do a power factor. So we're seeing a power factor of 0.54, and we now what also we can pull up is THD on the fundamental, so we can see uh, the source voltage is pretty much ideal, and uh, the current is um, sort of off the charts. We can pull up, if we get rid of this screen here, and let's run an FFT now, and we can pull up uh, the logarithmic spacing, so we can see the harmonic content of that initial, of that load current, um, of that source current, and it really does not look very good at all. If we wanted to overlay that with like a conducted emission standard, uh, this is really quite awful. And this is why, I guess, uh, a power factor correction topology is necessary now with modern electronics. So a good exercise here in using PSIM to uh, the simple simulation to run with free run mode, using these runtime variables to, to smooth things out and seeing what the impacts are on the uh, source current. So that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, please pack, check back again for more videos.